Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of pseudatomic and atomic operations. So one of the issues that we can run into when we have multiple threads is when our threads are accessing some shared resource. So we saw how this can be a problem in our last example where we had multiple different threads trying to print using stood out at the same time. So we saw some nasty interleavings of prints. Now, one of the ways that we can solve this problem, like we saw last time, is with our std mutex. But we have a lot of tools in our toolbox in C++. And another way that we can help deal with uh, you know, this type of contention for a shared resource is with our std atomic. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics of the std atomic and atomic operations in general. And we'll try to understand it through a motivating example and then see how we can fix, say, our problem using std atomic. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll open up uh, atomic.cpp, our new example. And inside of here, we'll just include a couple things to start off with. So IO stream, so we can do some printing. And we'll also include thread here, so we can spawn some threads. Now we'll also need a main function, so we'll go ahead and write that as well. Now let's say we want to spawn a few threads to perform some work. And as part of that work, they're going to increment some counter. So we'll say create some integer counter, initialize it to zero. And then we'll create a lambda expression, which will be our work for our threads to do. So we'll say auto work is equal to, you know, for first write our captures for a lambda. So we'll go ahead and capture our counter by reference. So all of our threads will access the same counter. And then we can write the body of our lambda here. And we'll just have a simple for loop here. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 100. So for 100 iterations of this loop, i plus equals one, we're just going to increment this counter. So we'll just do something like counter plus equals one each iteration. Then we can go ahead and spawn a couple threads down here. So we can create some thread T1 that will run this work lambda and some std thread T2, right? That will also run this lambda. And right after this, we can wait for our threads to finish. So we can call join on both of them. So T1.join and T2.join. And then finally, after we've done all this work, we can print out the value of our counter followed by a new line character. So what should we expect to happen here, right? At least initially. So each of our threads is going to run this work lambda. So we should see hopefully 200 total increments of counter, 100 increments from T1 and 100 increments from T2 here. So when we print out counter at the end of our program, hopefully we should see 200. So let's go ahead and save this and we can compile our application here. So this atomic.cpp, we'll call our output executable atomic and we can go ahead and run things. And indeed we see, you know, 200 gets printed out every time we run our program, right? Things seem to be working as expected. But let's see what happens if we increase the number of iterations of this loop. So now we have, you know, a lot more work going on inside of our threads. So instead of incrementing counter 100 times, they're now incrementing counter 10,000 times. So what should we see at the end here when we print out counter? Hopefully we should see 20,000. 10,000 increments from T1 and 10,000 increments from T2 of this integer counter. So let's go ahead and save this and we can recompile atomic.cpp and let's see what happens when you run atomic. And we see something rather surprising here. We get some different results here. Occasionally we get the right result, this 20,000, but we get some number between 10,000 and 20,000 each time. So, you know, 18,700 here, 19,600 here, 10,200 here, and so on and so forth. So what exactly is going on here? Why aren't we getting, say, this consistent result of 20,000? We're doing 20,000 total increments. Why, are, why aren't we seeing our counter equal to 20,000 at the end of our program? Well, this all comes down to data races. So let's go ahead and take a look at the CPP reference page for the memory model of C++. And specifically, we're concerned with this threads and data races section. So we can see down here in this paragraph, it says that when an evaluation of an expression writes to a memory location and another evaluation reads or modifies the same mem memory location, the expressions are said to conflict and that a program that has two conflicting evaluations has a data race. Now, after this, uh, it gives a couple ways that we could prevent data races. But it says that if we do have a data race, so if a data race occurs, the behavior of our program is undefined here. So because we have uh, evaluations of this you know, increment from multiple different threads, and we're not using any of these preventative measures here, 
we're invoking some undefined behavior here, or rather a program, um, or the behavior for a program is now undefined. So it's acceptable for you know us to see 18,000 or 19,000 or 10,000 and occasionally 20,000 here because our program uh, behavior is undefined now because we have this data race. So data races are things that we typically want to avoid inside of our programs. So what ways do we have to avoid them? Well, the first thing it says is that if we have evaluations that are on the same thread, we don't have a data race. Great, right? So if we have a single threaded program, we're not gonna run into this problem. Okay, now another way that it says we can avoid this is using the stood atomic, right? And if our evaluations are atomic operations, right? So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. And then the final one it talks about is this happening or happens before um, uh, kind of ordering, right? So one of the uh, conflicting evaluations happens before another. And one of the ways we can get this is with our stood mutex, right? So that's what this third bullet point is, but we're gonna be focusing on this stood atomic today. So let's go ahead and open up our program and, and think about what this evaluation really is doing underneath the hood, this counter plus equals one. And this should hopefully kind of illustrate why we have a problem the way that our code is written. So what is this really doing when we do an increment? Well, it's doing a read, modify, and write operation. So we first read the value of our counter, then we update the value that we read, and then we write that result back out to memory here. So we have a read, a modify, and a write. Now the problem that we have when we have multiple threads doing this at the same time is that these reads and modifies and writes can become interleaved across different threads. So let's take a simple example here. Let's say both of our threads first read our counter to be the value zero. So they both read the value zero. Then both of our threads increment that value. So now they both increment the value that they read from zero to one. And then finally, they write their result back out to memory. So both threads write one back out to memory. So you can see the issue that we have here. We had two increments, but we only incremented the final value by one because we had this data race. We had this interleaving of the, these read, modify, write operations across different threads. So even though both of our threads incremented, say, this value here, we only saw one total increment on the other side. Now, one of the ways that we have around this is through using these atomic operations. So let's go ahead and go back to stood atomic here. Now, what exactly does it mean to have an atomic operation? Well, we can think about it in our context here of this increment. What does it mean to have, say, an atomic increment? Well, in, our co in, in this context, what it means is that our read, modify, write becomes one atomic unit. So it can no longer be, it can no longer be split up anymore. And that's what prevents these interleavings. So read, modify, write becomes a single operation. So when two threads do this atomic uh, increment, this atomic read, modify, write, they can't interleave anymore. One is always going to occur before um, or, or after the other, right? So because of that, we're always going to get, you know, we're always going to see all of our increments here. So all 20,000 in this case, because we can no longer uh, interleave those sub operations, the read, modify, and write. Okay, so let's see how we can use this stood atomic. So we have a number of different types that this atomic is supported for. So we have all these aliases when we're using these integral types like integers and unsigned integers, etc. And we also have these different uh, member functions that we can use whenever we're using an atomic type. So, you know, some operators like, you know, logical like this XOR and OR and AND um, or increment or decrement. So let's go ahead and try out using our atomic increment here for our counter. So the first thing we need to do is we need to include our atomic header. That's where CPP reference said all of this was defined. And all we really need to do here is change our counter, this integer, to be a std atomic integer here, right? So now by default here, whenever we do this plus equals, we can see that it increment, we can see that our atomic uh, implements this plus equals operator here. So now we have an atomic increment instead of a normal increment. This atomic uh, increment is a uh, atomic read, modify, write operation now. It can't be interleaved across threads. We've gotten rid of our data race. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and we can compile atomic.cpp and call our output executable atomic. And we can see when we run our example now, we see 20,000 every single time. We no longer have this undefined program behavior. We're always getting the expected result here. We've gotten rid of our data race. Um, that we saw was pointed out by our memory model over here from C++. 
Now, one thing you might have, you know, you know, noticed here is that we did get the right answer for very small loops here, but we still had undefined behavior here, right? So we can sometimes run into this, you know, kind of simple situation where we spawn one thread, it quickly does all of its work before the other thread even gets started. So occasionally we can see the right result, right? But we're not, uh, say, guaranteed to get that res right result. We still have undefined program behavior. So we might get the right result sometimes and the incorrect result the other other times. So that's why these uh, you know, bugs with parallel programs can be rather tricky. We might not even know we have a bug, right, with certain situations because it might never get exposed. But that's gonna go into it for this time. I'll make sure to link below the video, um, this Stood Atomic CDP reference page and also the one from the memory model. And as always, you can find any of these examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick. And I hope you have a nice day.